and we're back. So I'm doing the review of the Google Pixel 3a XL and my review is, go buy it. See you guys later. Okay, just kidding. So um, that pretty much sums up the review, but I'm gonna give you guys a little bit more information, go a little bit more in depth with what I've encountered with my use of this device over the last week or so. Let me tell you what I don't like about this device and then we'll get into everything that I like. So first off, if you know everything is not judged in a vacuum and so this is going to be compared against other devices so i have to state everything that i don't like that other devices may bring first off there's no ip rating this is not water resistant um, at all there's no ip rating cool i understand why it's not because you do have to pay for that and this is a budget device i understand but still it doesn't have it i don't like it no wireless charging um, there's no futuristic features, there's no in-screen fingerprint scanner, no IR, face unlock, no wide angle for the camera. These are things that other competitors are offering and this one doesn't have it. Um, another thing that I don't like is that fast charging is tied to the PD standard. So um, if you're not familiar with what that means, you can go, you know, look that up, Google it. Essentially, you have different standards for fast charging and I, I would... I would say that the most common um, is the Qualcomm standard, and that pretty much is brought, um, or rather it is supported by a wide range of devices because the Qualcomm chip comes in such a wide range of devices. Um, so you can almost pick up any fast wireless charger and it's gonna work because of that, you know, that's the Qualcomm standard that's being used. This, however, because it's the PD standard, not so much. You have to buy a specific charger in order to fast charge it. The fast charger does come in the box um, and it does charge pretty quickly. Um, but to be honest, I barely really use the fast charging feature because of a reason that I'll go into later. But just going out, it, it, it uses the PD standard. So you, um, if you have a bunch of fast chargers, you're not gonna be able to use them all. You're gonna have to use the one that came with it or purchase more PD standard fast chargers. Um, no true stereo speakers on the bottom. I hate when companies do this. You have these two speakers on the bottom and you think they're stereo, but they're not. This is the main driver. If you cover this one up, it's gonna be muffled. You cover this one up, nothing happens, okay? I don't know why they do that. Um, if it's gonna be stereo speaker on the bottom, then just put two different drivers or just put one hole. I don't know why they do that, I guess for symmetry. And also no micro SD card slot. Especially if you're someone coming from a Samsung device, then that's something that you're going to be missing out on. Cool. Now, everything that I do like, even though, and you, if you notice, I, I didn't say anything about the fact that it feels cheap or that it doesn't have premium um, materials that it's made from, because I do genuinely like the fill in the hand. It is a bit, um, it's not heavy. I mean, I, it's kind of hard to explain because it has a nice feel to it, um, which I do think makes it feel a bit more premium. You know, premium, premium devices usually have a little bit more heft to them. Kudos to Apple because that's what they do with their products. They just feel heavier and because of that, you sort of uh, gravitate that heaviness to just something that feels more premium. Um, so the feel in the hand for this is really nice. I don't have any case. I didn't rock any case for this while I was using it. Just, uh, just rocking it naked, but it still feels really nice in the hand. Um, they designed this pretty well. The contours are on the back, no sharp corners. So yeah, so it feels really nice. The placement of the power button is right where it should be, especially for the Pixel 3 XL. So I have fairly large hands, so it's good for me. Um, no issues there at all. Stereo speakers, even though, as I stated, it's not true stereo speakers on the bottom, you do have a main driver here and then a driver here. And <clears throat> in this day and age, getting stereo speakers or stereo sound in budget devices is hard to come by. You have some premium devices that don't even have that. So again, I like that and they sound pretty good. Not as loud as the Galaxy S10 speakers, or even the S9, but I think that that has more so to do with Dolby Atmos that's um, featured on those devices than anything. Still sounds good, but definitely not as loud and not as good as the Samsung Galaxy S10s, but they're fine. Um, solid display. I remember the Google Pixel 2 XL had a lot of um, blue tinting when you're viewing things from the side. No issues there at all with this display. Really solid. It is a 1080p panel, but it is a higher quality AMOLED panel. No issues at all. Um, and uh, 
The reason why I said that I don't use much of the fast charging is because of this next point. That's because it has great battery life. Um, I mean, I seldom charge this thing, being honest. Um, maybe once a day, if that. Um, and I don't even charge it to 100%. I just charge it for a little bit of time. And, you know, I just get that extra 20% and it lasts me. Uh, the other day I went to bed with the phone at 32% at around 12 a.m. Woke up at about 8.30 and it was dropped down at 30%. That shows how good Android has gotten at becoming more and more efficient with battery. Because this actually has a smaller battery than, um, than the regular Google Pixel 3. But also you have to take into account that this does have a 1080 panel. So of course that's not going to drain the battery as much. But um, just Android software has become a lot better in not draining the battery. Now, I remember there were days before where... Uh, you would leave your phone, you know, overnight and you're talking about dropping 10 to 15 percent. So good job Google in getting that right. Um, same great software as on a regular Pixel. You're still going to get all of those features from the Pixel, such as the call screening, which is awesome, the double tap wake, Android Q beta, you can flash that on here. Um, and then when the Android Q, whatever they decide to name it, comes out, you'll be the first to receive it because it's a Pixel device. And so Pixel devices usually uh, receive them faster than everyone else. Um, let's see, in terms of software, what else do I want to say? So you do get a fast and fluid um, software experience. No problems, no hiccups. I've been using this and like I said, no force closes, no restarts, no nothing. It's just worked awesomely. And this does use the Qualcomm 670 um, SOC. So you're not getting the higher end chip, but in a vacuum, if you're just using this by itself, it's fast and snappy, no issues at all um, that I have encountered. Also gaming, gaming on this device was great, had no issues, no hiccups whatsoever, played Asphalt, um, also PUBG, and like I said, I didn't run into any problems at all. Um, now if you're comparing this directly to an S10 and you're using both of them, the S10 is going to open up apps faster because that chip is just it's beast. You know what's um, featured on the S10. And then also it has more RAM. This only has four gigabytes of RAM. So, but like I said, in a vacuum, and if you're only using this device, that's more than enough for you. It's not a problem. So don't get, um, I don't want to say sidetracked or feel, you know, like you're, you're going to have an inadequate device just because somebody else has an S10 and on paper, or if you put your Pixel 3 AXL directly next to theirs, it's going to be slower. It's a great device. Just know that, okay? Um, like I said, fast software, quick fingerprint scanner, especially coming from the S10. Um, the S10's in-screen um, in fingerprint scanner is awesome because it's so futuristic, but it's not as fast. So just tap it and this opens up, which is awesome. So getting a bit more acclimated to using that since I've been using the S10, um, S10 Plus. So this phone will fit what you need. Now, the only thing is if you're someone that absolutely needs the top of the line, top of the line, every and everything, then no, you won't get this. You go get the S10 Plus. Okay, cool. And unfortunately for myself, um, I mean, I love the S10 Plus. There's no reason for me not to like it. And so because I already have the S10 Plus, I'm going to stay with the S10 Plus. But if I was in the market for a phone right now, this is what I would be getting. And I didn't even get to the part that is the reason why you should really get this. And that's the camera. This is a flagship camera in this junior flagship or budget device. And that's the compromise that you usually get whenever you're trying to search for a budget device or you don't want to break the pop, you don't want to break your pocket. Um, the one area that it always is going to suffer is going to be the display. Usually, well, I wouldn't even say battery light because that depends. It's usually the display, the design, and the camera. This is a solid display. Okay, it's a 1080p panel. No, it's not quad HD, but it's still a decent display. And the camera is freaking off the charts. This camera is better than the iPhone 10s Max's camera. Okay, it's the same exact camera that's in the um, Google Pixel 3 um, family. The, all the Pixel 3s have the same cameras, except maybe the front-facing camera. I think it's not as good, but I think that that's just a hardware limitation. But where Google really shines is the software. You're looking at these pictures, they're vibrant, they're punchy. Color saturation is great, they just pop on the screen. Portrait mode is awesome. 
Google's algorithm for figuring out portrait mode with a single camera still amazes me. You know, what they're doing with one camera, what Samsung can't do with three, or the iPhone can't do with two. It's just crazy. The one area that I would say that the camera is, it's not, it's not that it's not good or great. It's just that it wanes in comparison is the videography. And that's just the way that it's always been with uh, Pixel phones. The videography is still good, it's solid, but I think that the iPhone probably has the better videography, um, or even maybe the S10 and uh, the S10 line of, of devices. But it's not that the videography is bad, it's just that those are a little bit better, okay? But hands down, camera, display, build, those are the three pillars that usually take some sort of sacrifice with a phone. And Google has hit, I think, all three of these out of the park. Yeah, it's not premium materials, but this is a solid polycarbonate body, it's unibody, and I don't think that you could probably catch a video by Jerry Rig, everything you'll probably put it through um, its paces to see how durable it is, but I know that the iFixit repairability score is better than a lot of the latest flagships, which is good. So overall, I cannot um, reinstate enough how much of a solid device this is. These are going directly against the S10e and the iPhone XR. It is going to be a tough sell for someone to walk into Best Buy, look at the iPhone XR, look at the Samsung S10e and the Pixel 3a XL and ask what the differences are. And then that employee shows them the camera on this one and it just wows them. And then they see that this is almost half the price. I'm telling you, this is, it's, it's, it's gonna be interesting. Very, very interesting year. Um, and I can't wait to see what the numbers actually look at, look like at the end of the day, um, heading into quarter four. But I really do think that this is going to change the market or shake up the market, especially again, when you have people or companies like OnePlus, now they wanna get into the higher end market with the OnePlus 7 Pro, and you start reaching those flagship prices of 750 and 799. And, you know, then you have Google that releases this phone that, you know, $399, that's kind of, I don't know, it's, it's going to be very, very interesting. So everyone, this is Max Tech Toy Box signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if there's anything you guys want to know more about with this device. If any questions, concerns, please leave them down below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.